Hey gang! Alrighty, welcome back. Episode 9 of Zero Carb Journal. How about that? So I was going to do a live one, but um, I decided not to because I haven't had any time to figure it all out. And I have a busy, have had a busy week and a busy day and I got a lot of things I would like to get to today. And so I'm going to just go ahead and get this done. But today is kind of a big one and a special one. And I may expand on this one more in the future um, because I've feel sort of rushed. I wanted to prepare a little more, but I didn't really have time. And we'll see what happens here. If I get some time to edit, maybe I'll put up some photos and whatnot. But so today is February 9th, Friday morning. And the reason this is a special one is because it's my one year carniversary. <laughs> so it's not today. It was Wednesday. Actually, it was the 7th of February. And honestly, you guys, I feel like it's my birthday or you know it it really holds a lot of meaning for me um this day because it's the day I discovered my path to to wellness coming from a place where I was so scared and so sick so um it was it meant a lot to me you know I Wednesday I I kind of I'd been looking forward to it and I I I sort of forgot when I woke up and then kind of a little ways in the day went oh yeah it's the 7th and I just, I didn't do anything special really, um, but I just felt, you know, I was just really um, was aware and appreciative and just so thankful that, that I found this path and all of you folks and um, all the support and the wonderful community and just all the great information um, and all of it. So, you know, um, that's it. So this episode, I just kind of want to wrap up what it has been like 12 months of zero carb. And, you know, I've covered a lot of stuff in the last eight episodes just with regards to my whole history. So I'll try not to go over too much of that. But, um, you know, what I'd like to do is just sort of talk about how I started and what I've learned along the way here. And, and this will go back over a lot of things I've talked about already, but um, that's OK. So yeah, so uh, one year ago, I was coming from the specific carbohydrate diet. Now, most of you probably don't know what that is. That's a diet um, for you know autoimmune disease that was um, really based on the early work. I think of Dr. Haas in the 30s and then Elaine Gottschall in the 70s um, revived it and wrote a great book called Breaking the Vicious Cycle. And now there's a wonderful doctor, Dr. David Suskind in Seattle at Seattle Children's and University of Washington um, Gastroenterology, who's got another book called Nimble Therapy out. And he's a big believer in the SCD, the specific carbohydrate diet for people with Crohn's and um, ulcerative colitis and autoimmune diseases like that. So that diet was um, basically eliminating all polysaccharides and so for me for most of the year prior to this one just about the whole year I was just about on it for 12 months I had been eating um, meat nuts fruit and homemade yogurt uh, fermented for 24 hours now it was it was really limiting and it felt far more restrictive even though those includes more things than I'm eating now it felt far more limiting than I'm eating now and in hindsight I think it at least the way I was doing it it was a very poor diet for my health and it gave me a lot of progress and I don't mean to um, discredit it it definitely was profound in the effects it had on my Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, I, I started feeling better right away when I dropped the polysaccharides. And when I went to that protocol, I was feeling far better. But the reason I don't think it was good for my health is because of all the fruit. You know, I was still trying to fuel myself with carbs. I had done keto paleo a few years before, but of course not. I had done that prior to realizing that my guts were so messed up. So I had come to this one as a way to heal my intestines. And so I was back on carbs and fueling myself with carbs. And I was getting all, pretty much all of that from fruit with, and nuts, but nuts, you know, pretty low there. So um, I was, I would get up in the morning, I, I would freeze my apples from the year before I had frozen them in the summer. And I had freezers full of apples and pears and plums. And I would get up in the morning and I would, I would um, boil, well, 
I would sort of make applesauce basically and uh, fruit sauce. And I would use that during the day, um, and it was delicious, it sounds really weird, but mixed with nuts, like nut butter, and meat, and a little bit of fruit, and um, yogurt, it sounds crazy, but it was really good. I really enjoyed eating in that way. But the reason it wasn't good for me, you know, I was eating six apples a day or something like that, and, you know, that fructose was building up, you know, was terrible for me, and I know now that that was leading to my signs of metabolic syndrome you know i was starting to not be able to beat that gut and it was fine if i was eating you know losing weight low calories but i i was pretty slim i wasn't coming from a place of being obese or overweight um and i was trying to i i would stay pretty you know maintenance level with my calories about 1800 to 2000 at that time i had to count very carefully but if i went over by like 100 200 my gut would just start blowing up and so i finally got tired of lifting weight, you know, doing my workouts, not lifting weights, but body weight, fitness, um, calisthenics. I got tired of, of having done, being, I had done that for two years. And every time I tried to bulk, I would just go backwards. Um, I would, I would not get much stronger and I would just get heavier and lose, you know, reps in my pull-ups and all that. So I last December and January, I said, I'm going to bulk. I was looking at my pictures and I was just super skinny. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I just keep, I thought I was just scared of it. You know, I thought I was not committing to it and that I just needed to go ahead and let myself get a little overweight. And so I, I did a bulk for like six weeks and I got to the end of January and I was super sick. I started really losing consciousness a lot, as you know, and, and my bloody intestines and all that were really starting to come to the forefront. But more than that, I just got this belly that I hated um, and I was just a mess all around. So, you know, that was when I really went, whoa, OK, it's not just you you're not just not committing to a bulk um there's something wrong here and that was when i switched to zc and so um you know i instantly started feeling much better and my i had a rough transition i won't i won't lie about that i talked about that already it took me a while to kind of move beyond the early stages i was i was following the standard advice you know i was trying to eat high fat i was um eating quite a bit of variety on my zero carb in those days, not really being aware of quite how sensitive I was. Um, and I wasn't very sensitive, you know, so I didn't really know how things were affecting me. And I was eating a lot of salt, which I think is fine. I actually think that's important in the early days. I had bad cramps and continued diarrhea and all of that stuff through those early months. Um, but I had a lot of glimpses of what could happen and how good I could feel. So um, I just kept going. So. Through, as time went on there, um, I started to feel better and better and started to be able to listen more and more to my body. And I started to realize these things I've been talking about over the last few weeks that, that for me, the best solution is to do it differently than the normal advice. The normal advice, you know, it depends on who you listen to. Eat meat and drink water, I think, is the best advice there is in the early days. Um, and I absolutely concur with the general overall idea of don't count calories especially when you're starting don't worry about your weight especially when you're starting let your body heal let your hormones come back online let your natural hunger signals and satiety and all of those things kind of fall back into where they're supposed to be and that could take a long time you know it might if you've been someone who's been obese in your life and you've been struggling with your weight for you know many many years you might you know, have a long path of, of doing that. And you probably, you may or may not see any weight loss progress. This isn't necessarily a weight loss diet. So, you know, that I want to just stress because I keep talking about how I've been monitoring and managing my weight in these last few weeks, you know, a month and a half, two months now. Um, but it's not good advice when you're when you're learning. You don't need to do that, um, and you don't want to do that. And part of the reason is is because you just don't know. The calories are so different in terms of the number. And uh, I don't want to get into CICO and any of that. But I will just say, I counted cal calories carefully for years, and I know that 1,800 calories when I was on a mixed diet was I would lose weight there. And 2,000 was median of maintaining but that was a pretty close line like 2100 2200 and i was a i was 
a sleuth when it came to that stuff. You know, I was weighing and rinsing everything off and weighing to the ounces and all that with every bite that went in my mouth because I was so sick and so concerned and trying to learn. And it, I had to be right on the line or I would gain weight. And um, as soon as I went to zero carb, I started eating an enormous amount. I mean, my body was starving. You know, I was hungry even though I was putting on that abdominal adiposity. Um, so I was eating, I was counting calories in the first few weeks. I made that mistake. That's why I encourage you not to, people not to. You know, I was counting calories. I was trying to do macros and put in, you know, 70% fat. That was making me sick. But what I was finding was that I was eating like 4,000 calories a day and I wasn't gaining weight. So don't, you know, do really trust the process, at least at first. So that went you know, on and I eventually got smart and started to cut the fat and stop counting calories. Probably after a month or so, I figured out that I was over that. And, um, you know, I was tired of it anyways, after years of feeling so limited. So I stopped doing that. Now I continue to weigh myself. I continue to weigh myself and I continue to do that. And that's mostly because I use that as a marker of my illness. And maybe I'll put up a, if I have time, I might put up a screenshot here of um, an event this summer when I went to visit my parents and I'll show you why I do that. You know, I went 15 pounds from a big drop to a big spike in the course of six days. And uh, so I do like to maintain that record because it's useful to me. Um, but I don't look at the scale as my guide of, of anything. I look at how I look and how I feel. Um, so just that said, I just wanted to make that clear. Now, uh, moving on into through my year, you know, I kept paying attention. I kept learning. Now I did eat bacon for quite a while and then I dropped it and put it back in and dropped it and put it back in. And sure enough, you know, I, I've come to realize that really leads to me deteriorating. I start to get edema, you know, bloating. Um, and light inflammation, you know, I don't, I don't avoid it entirely. I'll eat it once in a blue moon. If I go out, I might have some, but I can expect probably a little bit of diarrhea later that day and a little bit of edema in the coming days, usually two or three or four days later, I'll have, my ankles will be swollen. I can see where my socks were, which I'm not, it shouldn't happen, um, at my, you know, body weight and all that. So um, I pretty much avoid that now, and that kind of goes for all pork. I've tried with different stuff. Bacon's definitely worse than other pork, um, but I mostly I don't feel as good when I eat pork, and I don't eat much of it. And um, it doesn't always make me sick, but it does if I eat a lot of the fat. So I haven't tried poultry yet. I'm really just not interested. I've got a freezer full of chicken legs that I feed to my dogs, but I haven't really had any interest in, in eating any poultry. Um, and then electrolytes, you know, that's another big one we get a lot, I get a lot of comments on and people always wonder about. I do feel like electrolytes are important in the transition stage. I don't know why, but I had terrible cramping. I supplemented magnesium and potassium and I ate a lot of salt. Now, those may have played into each other. Maybe if I tried dropping it then, I might have felt better, but I don't think I would have liked the taste of my meat without salt back then. I liked things really salty. And, you know, the cramps were significant in the early days and I don't know. So I, I did supplement with those things. Now, over time, I dropped the magnesium and potassium probably after six weeks or two months. And then I started playing with salt and you guys know that story, you know, eventually just in the last two months now, I've dropped salt entirely and I feel so much better for that. Now I'm not saying salt is bad and I'm not saying you shouldn't salt your food. I'm just saying what I've found but through my experiments is I feel better that way. And then cooking the food, you know, I, I found that I like to render most of the fat out. I, I prefer the way the food tastes and I feel far better and I keep going back and trying ribeye and other you know I do like chuck eye steak I'll enjoy one of those once in a while I do like chuck steak but thin I, I don't like it thick with all the fat in there I kind of like to to cook it well done and burn it but I do like those things but if I eat them regularly or eat them too much day after day I start to feel ill I the fat I think I do have a problem with processing fat now I never have stool that looks like pure grease or fat like with the rainbow in the toilet that I've seen pictures of of people who really can't process it so I'm not sure what's going on there it might be a gallbladder issue or something like that uh, my doctor had some ideas we did some tests but so far nothing I'll go back to him in another month here and 
you know whatever it doesn't really matter you guys I'm doing awesome so continuing through the year you know I've just continued that path and the farther I go the more I realize that's what works for me well done well done um, ground beef is my is my number one as you guys know my meat cookies and no salt not much variety now I had a few pieces of salmon this week and and I sure enjoy that and that doesn't seem to do anything uh, either way I don't notice any significant improvements I don't notice any detriment so i have been solid you guys firm stools all week i told you last week i deviated a little from my protocol and i kind of slipped a little bit backwards and i am right back on track and i can't even tell you how happy that makes me because that makes sort of a long continuous stretch minus those obvious uh, in incursions into you know a little bit different stuff that that took me somewhere else but i know now like my healing is real i am getting firmer and firmer up by the day and I'm just so excited to see how good it can get down the road here so yeah that's really 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 rewarding and really pleasing and uh, as funny as that sounds but that's a big deal to me so um, yeah ground beef well done um, that is my thing so I'm gonna stop the camera because it's gonna stop and I'm gonna restart here in just a second okay I'm back so yeah um, so that's kind of, you know, most of the year in review in terms of the physical aspects. I'm sure I'm forgetting all kinds of things. But, uh, you know, I want to talk about a few things. I've gotten some great comments from some of you guys. And I would like to touch on um, Psychic Outlaw. You made some great comments, and I appreciate that you weren't picking on me. You were just sort of trying to understand. And I, I get this. I mean, you know, before I started, I thought... Well, for one, I thought it was crazy, and I didn't really talk about it for the first few months to anybody for the most part until I really started feeling well. I was sure I was going to switch or go back, and I was just experimenting, you know, for a short time. Um, but more than that, I did a lot of reading, and I did a lot of studying, and I did a lot of, of um, you know, trying to crack, you know, the crack what was you know the right way to do it how to optimize my nutrition how to you know I how to manage as I told you I was micromanaging my calories and macros and supplementing with salt and um, and magnesium and all sorts of things and those aren't bad things in the in the early days at all and I totally get where people come from and there's also a lot of people doing this in a lot of different ways you've got the guys eating absolutely raw only raw and claiming that that is the optimal nutrition and then you've got guys who i really respect like frank tofano um who i got a lot out of and i think he's a wonderful resource um who really study the nutrition side of it and really have a really good handle on what foods have what and where you're going to access these nutrients and the best you know bioavailable forms and all that I think that's all really, really, really good info, and it's all very, very interesting. However, I don't feel like it necessarily applies, and I don't think that it's good to use as a guide for my, I'll just say my personal path. And I think that in the early days, it led to me making a lot of mistakes that made me more ill and not feeling as well as I could have early on. And the reason is, is because, you know, you tend to believe the science and you tend to look at the nutrients and go, well, that makes sense. I'm going to need more of this K2 or D3 or whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, now I've kind of come around to the idea that the fact of the matter is, is that we really don't know anything about that stuff. I mean, sure, we know that those nutrients are in those foods. I don't think Frank is wrong about those things at all. I don't think the science is wrong. But what I do think is not known is how our bodies as carnivores with the absence of plants entirely. Now, close doesn't count because there's something ha that happens with all those plants, um, even if it's just a little, whether it's the anti-nutrients or whatever. And you can look at the studies that talk about how uh, you know, bran interferes with your absorption of iron by an enormous percent. So a little bit of bran, and now you don't have enough folate. Or a little bit of phytates or whatever they are, and now you don't have enough magnesium. So there's 
all kinds of anti-nutrients that in plants that interfere with your uptake of D3, that interfere with your, you know, the way you can access magnesium and this and that. So that's why, you know, I don't think that when people look at those studies and they look at the nutrition in the foods and then they say, well, you definitely need a lot of this. I don't think we know that. I don't think we can say that for sure. And I like to look at the Hungarian researchers, Sabbath, Thoth, I'm going to say that wrong, even though I'm 50% Hungarian. <laughs> uh, my parents, my mom grew up speaking Hungarian in a Hungarian household. Um, her, my my grandparents, I believe, were first generation um, here in this country. And my, uh, yeah, anyways, so Sabathoth in, uh, in Budapest and his partner um, at the Paleo Life, Paleo Keto, Keto or paleo medicina i'm not sure what it's called but they do great research and they have research on you know northern russian peoples who live in cold northern climates and eat carnivorously and their vitamin d is fine and but other you know than the few outlying studies there really aren't studies on carnivorous folks and what their nutritional needs are and i maintain that not only is our chemistry so different and our absence of anti-nutrients and you know, inflammation and whatever else, the whole picture has changed. So just like, you know, everyone would think I would have scurvy by now, but there's no scurvy when you just eat meat because it's the plants that make, the, you know, block the glucose uptake and give you the scurvy. They don't give you the scurvy, but that's what happens. So, you know, that's why I don't put much stock in the nutrition. And the other part of it is that, you know, when you eat just meat, you eat a lot of meat. A lot. I mean, you know, I'm still eating uh, what I think is sort of a light load. And I'm finding myself at like three pounds a day. And there's a lot of nutrients in there. Um, and we, our needs are different. And I do feel like if you overthink it and you go, well, I need 70% fat and I need a lot of variety. You know, I think that's one of the biggest fallacies is that you need a lot of variety because I believe that what that actually does is you replace, and this is probably just straight woo coming out of my mouth and it's my current belief is that you're replacing the most nutrient dense food in the carnivorous diet, which is in my opinion, ruminant meat, maybe eggs, maybe fish, but it's probably not poultry and it's probably not pork. Um, and it's definitely not processed meats. And I really don't think it's just fat. Like I don't think it's butter and I don't think it's, you know, lard. I mean, not that those are bad for you. I, I enjoy, I don't enjoy any butter. I think it makes me sick. I haven't gone back to try it. Um, but if you replace a lot of the potential meat you could be eating with fat because of chasing macros, I believe that you might be shortchanging yourself nutritionally. You know, you can look at all the nutrition and say, I'm going to eat this fat and a little bit of this meat and a little bit of these chicken organs and a little bit of this pork. And I personally, I know I don't feel as well when I was doing that early on. I would not that I was doing exactly that, but, and I also believe that we just don't know and that I think just the all muscle meat diet you know has some unknown strengths to it in the sense that you know it's packed with the full spectrum of nutrition that we need it's got great ratios of fat and protein and that most people really overthink it now the where I got to this was really from my observations on the vets you know the people who've been doing it a long time bear owsley stanley one of my old heroes when i was a hippie kid and now one of my new heroes now that i'm a uh you know zero carber he's really the father of this and he wasn't big on variety now stephenson you know another huge hero of mine going back to the early 1900s with the inuit you know he made it pretty clear in Fat of the Land that he didn't notice that the Inuit ate a whole lot of Oregon meat. You know, he likes to debunk that idea that tip to tail, you know, nose to tail. And I would argue that uh, that eating ground beef is pretty close to nose to tail minus, you know, the organs. And so, you know, and then the other, the modern day long term, -term folks, Charles Washington, Kelly um, Williams, Hogan, I always get that wrong. Maybe I got it right. 
and uh, Amber O'Hearn, you know, who enjoys liver and, and, uh, and many, many others who I'm all, I'm going to forget Dana from Zero Carb Health and, um, you know, all types of, of people who we can look to. Oh, the Andersons, you know, one of my biggest inspirations, they just eat ribeye unsalted all day, every day. And I don't think they eat all day, but, um, you know, these people all just have learned over time that, that overthinking it leads to less optimal health for each of them. And that what works best is just eating meat and drinking water. And I know that sounds so simplistic and so, you know, like I'll reject everything else, but I don't think it is. Um, I think it really, it really is the way to find what works for you. Eat the meat you like, you can afford, and eventually you'll feel better, you know, as you tune it in. It might be real fatty, you know, Sean Baker eats ribeyes all day. I, I can't do that. You know, that's too much fat for me. He's found that's what works for him. So yeah, don't overthink it is, is I guess my advice or, or at least what I've learned for me. You might experiment with those things and see what, you know, how, how that, you know, practice of optimizing for nutrition works for you. It seems to work great for Frank. He looks so healthy. So I'm not picking on that. I'm just saying, take in that information, but trust your body and listen and observe. And, and really it's about observing. And, you know, for me, um, I know like listening to Joe Anderson say that for the first year they ate, they ate a lot of salt and then they noticed it was making them, like he says, puffy faced and, and they just started, you know, feeling better and they dropped it after a year. You know, that was really, for me, really interesting because I learned that, you know, it takes a while, first of all, to adapt that everyone kind of goes through that. And I think everyone probably overthinks it. You know, they were eating all sorts of different stuff and then living on just pemmican and whatever else. And, you know, I find that really inspiring that we all are going to do that. So I'm not picking on anyone. You're going to overthink it. You just are. It's a, it's such a change, you know, it's so dramatic from everything we know and that we believed. Um, but if you can just try and simplify and learn to trust the process. So yeah, so one year, zero carb, a, a journey of, of self-discovery, a journey of um, rejecting all the things I used to believe. And, you know, that's been pretty profound throughout my whole life because now I'm quite the cynic <laughs> for better or for worse. Um, and I have a hard time believing in a lot of science nowadays, which makes me sound crazy, but I'm a pretty astute observer and I feel like I've had fairly good judgment with what to trust and what not to trust, but it just makes me look a little closer at things that maybe aren't so set in stone. So, and as a person who has been very interested in sustainability and growing my own food and, and what's best for the land, and as you guys know, my fire um, hobbies, my fire science hobbies, you know, a few years ago when I went to Washington, D.C., chosen by Popular Mechanics and Department of Energy and everyone else as a front runner in this competition for clean burning wood stoves you know i had to i was upset as upset i was at when i learned about zero carb you know at the old paradigm because i was like are you kidding me like we've been burning wood for you know ever and i have to come up with a better way to do it like we still don't know how to do it i drive around my neighborhood now and there's smoke coming out of everyone's chimneys but mine you know you can't tell when i'm burning my fire from outside it looks like nothing if it's cold outside it looks like a dryer exhaust and otherwise you just don't see anything it's crystal clear so you know science was telling me all the time that that was impossible i just read a solid biomass boiler study they're running at 25 percent efficiency mine run at like 90 percent efficiency and that drives me out of my mind, you know, that the science says that it's impossible. You can talk to all these old wood burners with wood stoves and they'll tell you I'm full of it and it can't be done. And I know now that they're wrong. Like the science is wrong. And uh, so, you know, I can't get those things into the public domain because of the EPA regulations. The The testing protocol for, you, you are, is set up for testing a crappy wood stove that burns and makes smoke so you start it and you heat it up and then you kind of get to where it's clean and then you test it for eight hours or whatever you know my stoves are built to burn and be done in 45 minutes they don't even fit into the protocol so they can't be tested so i mean i can test them i know how good clean they run um, anyways this is a long ramble going into why you know i'm a cynic and a skeptic and 
And then in terms of sustainability on my land, you know, I can look out there and I can see the animals making the property and the land and the wetlands and the pasture and everything healthier. And I can see all my neighbors wasted grass, you know, and I can see everyone mowing their lawns. And yet the science is telling me, oh, you can't raise cows without murdering you know, the earth, and I know that that's not true. I do know we murder the earth to raise cows. I'm going to spin this ring right now and see if I can darken the... We're getting some sun. No, it won't let me do it. Well, you'll just have to see me all burned out on the one side. But, you know, I know we're murdering the earth right now because we feed our cows soy, then we grow it in a horrible way, and we feed vegans soy as well, which is sad because it's all part of the same thing. You know, they use that to make paint. <laughs> and everything else and uh that is a s neither here nor there sorry um but our agricultural practices are horrid and you know raising corn and, and soy to feed cows i think is terrible there's no reason for that some of my fellow zero carbers disagree but uh, i think we can do better so at any rate um i eat that terrible meat right now no i'm sorry about that too um, but anyways, that's all part of my path of being a cynic and the year I've had and, you know, being zero carb just sort of reinforced that. So, yeah, I'm a crazy person. <laughs> oh, I just I feel so woo woo when I go out. If I talk to my parents, you know, I want to throw away their canola oils and seed oils and they're reading whatever, telling them that's the right stuff to eat. And they just think I'm bonkers. So I, it's really hard that stuff it's really hard and it's really sad so i mean i guess it's not sad if i'm wrong which i very well could be i'm wrong a lot <laughs> so i don't know but anyways i'm a cynic that's for dang sure um yeah so that's my year cynical growth learning good stuff all the way around look at this you guys are gonna be such an awesome day sun's coming up i've had a great week I'll just wrap this up, I guess, with a wonderful week um, of work. I've had a lot of desk work, did some work at the uh, boat shop in the engineering office, um, and I've had a lot of great successes. My workouts have been awesome. I'm feeling super good. My food has been, you know, delicious as always. And uh, I'm finally kind of digging myself out of, uh, you know, when I when I was sick, you know, I got myself in a financial hole to build this shack and get everything, you know, going down at the big house. And but I've got good renters in there now as of last week. And uh, and yeah, I'm finally kind of coming out of my financial hole. I dug myself uh, building this little shack and making this big change. And I can't wait. You know, I'm going to try and dig myself all the way out and then. I can't wait for the next step because I'm finally going to be one of my biggest goals other than my health. My number two goal has always been self-sufficient financial sustainability here at home. Um, and that was, you know, a function of all of my, these irons I have in the fire selling camera quit again. So one of my main goals, you know, other than my health for the last few years has been self-sufficient financial sustainability here at home. And, you know, with all my pokers in the fire now, you know, selling stove plans that came online this year, renting out the house finalized just in the last few weeks, really. Um, uh, continuing to sell off all my old surplus and getting back to boat work, um, all of these things, you know, there's some other, oh, whatever, there's some other things I'm forgetting, but little odds and ends that I do that bring in income. Um, these things are all starting to dovetail into being a nice network of, of both passive and non-passive incomes for me. And I'm, I'm going to get myself out of this hole and <clears throat> maybe I'll be able to travel. <laughs> I don't want to travel far, but it'd be nice to be able to go farther than 30 miles past squim there i've just got a little electric car got a little nissan leaf so i don't go very far i haven't been anywhere for years and i'm looking forward to changing that so um yeah <laughs> that's my week that's my year um i might put up some before and after photos of my gut We'll see if I get brave enough. I, one year ago, I hated the way I looked, even though I'd been working out. It was because of that fructose for a year. So I'll get some photos up of that maybe, and uh, maybe not. I'm not usually too lazy to do any editing once I get done with this part of it, and I just want to get it online. So we'll see how that goes. And I will try and work on a live one. I'd like to interact with you guys some more. And again, I just want to 
reiterate all of my thanks for all of you folks. Um, I feel so blessed. I feel so fortunate to have um, had the courage to start this, to have had the courage to share you know, really all of me, that's something I think I've struggled with for my whole life. I've always kind of had a mask that I put on in my old sales job. And, and, uh, and I was mostly like this, but I would just keep, you know, all the diarrhea <laughs> and my illness and, you know, a lot of that romantic history and all that stuff, you know, I'd keep that to myself because I, oh, I just, I hadn't accepted myself, I guess. And, uh, so you guys and all your support have made a huge difference for me. I think you, I can tell I'm just, much more confident and comfortable in my own skin, which is funny. I'm almost 50, right? To just get there now. But uh, I guess we're hopefully always growing and always on this path. And uh, But you guys have been a big part of that. Everyone who watches this and everyone who comments and everyone who subscribes. Boy, I'm really getting burned out. You're only going to get half my face here. It's beautiful out there. So, um, yeah, thank you guys. Thank all of you guys and gals. Thank everyone single one of you and uh, I hope that you're getting something out of this too I really uh, enjoy the idea that hopefully I can bring some value and some new information and a new point of view <clears throat> to something that you know we're getting a lot of traction with lately a lot of people are interested and there's a lot of information out there and hopefully my uh, input is helpful and, and maybe a little bit different perspective so and I'm definitely coming from it from someone who was ill not someone who was overweight you know and, and uh, that's a big difference and uh, boy, I sure have a lot of respect for you folks who do come here seeking, you know, to heal your lifelong obesity or anything like that, because this is a big step. You know, I, I wonder if I hadn't been unconscious on the floor with blood coming out of my butt, you know, if I ever would have made this jump. Um, and so I have a ton of respect and a ton of, uh, of yeah, respect is the way to put it. Um, admiration for all of you folks who give this a try um, especially those of you who really don't have any of those who are just coming from a health and wellness standpoint because that takes a lot of uh, curiosity and intuition and I'm, I'm just very very um, you know impressed with all that so anyways thanks very much everybody for your continued uh, follows and 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 for following along and you know if you can help me grow this channel uh, um it would it would be great i i really look forward to continuing to do this hopefully on a weekly basis and growing my interaction with you guys and um sharing more info as i go i know i'm kind of going over some of the same old ground here but uh, i think as we move down the road hopefully i'll just have continue to have more insights so if there's one thing i can tell you one of my, my biggest takeaway from a year of this is observation is key don't overthink it trust the simplicity of the process eat meat and drink water and uh and trust the observations you can make on your own body and, and what's working best for you rather than trying to measure macros or calories or do it right you know feel free to do it wrong if that's what works for you but just listen and pay attention so yeah okay that's enough for this time you guys thanks so much for watching and uh i'll see you next week